Oh my God. Uh, I'm going to give a testimony of my marriage. And uh, before I give that testimony, the short one I want to give. We were going to Tanzania and uh, we reached a place. Now in that place they don't speak English. They don't speak my language. They don't speak Swahili. They speak Nachusa. And I don't know Nachusa. And guess who was the speaker? I was the speaker. Now I want you to begin to think what I've learned. So people were singing and they were very happy. And uh, when they were singing, they said, now we are going to sing a song and we are going to call upon the preacher from Zambia. And they sang that song. And God gave me the scripture, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Now, my English Bible is not important in that place. So because I was ready, I said, Lord, give me the words to speak to these people. Amen. You have seen I don't need English. I don't need Swahili. But I need Nachusa. So I, I checked in my English Bible, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. I read it in English and left the Bible there. When they called me, I picked in a Jusa Bible for the first time in my life. And I went to the pulpit and I began to preach in a Jusa for the first time Amen. in my life. Amen. And people were surprised how I preached in a Jusa. After I left the pulpit, the whole Najusa left him. <laughs> Wow. So that's why I post I'm saying yeah. moving their things. Amen. So now about my wedding. It was in April when we said we are going to have the wedding on first August. And we, we were a bit reluctant in April. You know the activities like Good Friday and other things. It came to May. And we began to do a few things here, but we didn't have money. No money. My father had no money. My, my father is a pastor. So no money. I had no money. And uh, no one had money in our family who could help us. But we said it would be on 1st August. Uh, when you stick to your guns, to stick to what you say, God can meet you halfway. Amen. Amen. So we may got finished. We came to John. And there was nothing, no clothes, no suit, no anything apart from the cake. The little money that we had, we just took it for the cake. It was a two stand cake that we had we had arranged. And that was the only money that was there. So we stayed and we were praying. We reached July. In July. I think it was about three weeks before the matron said I'm not going to be on the on the wedding. I've got some issues to solve. So we said the wedding continues. And the, I, had, I was receiving a lot of teasing from my friends and others around. When is your wedding? I said on 1st August. Amen. But there was nothing. So we kept on praying and trusting God. By then my VNC was praying that site in, in a town called Kabe. I was in Lusaka. And we kept on praying. And what was interesting was God began to be faithful as we moved closer Amen. to the wedding. Amen. And we remained with about three weeks. People were still asking me, when is your wedding? I said on 1st August. <laughs> we printed a few cards and we distributed them to the people. But there was no wedding dress. You know, we, we had invited a lot of people. And in that area, there are more people. So now there was no wedding dress, no suit, no proper shoes to use on the lineup. Then people were teasing me, now how are you going to do this wedding? There's no wedding dress, there's no suit. That's why certain things you don't need to explain to certain people. Yes. Yes. They will not understand. Uh -huh. 
So we kept on praying and kept on praying. They kept on teasing and some people were teasing. But one person said, I'm going to stand with you. Whatever you need to buy, if you have money, just give me, I'll go and buy. Amen. Two weeks, we had the men with the two weeks. Still, the question came. Now from my parents, can I come for the wedding? <laughs> then I said, yes, you can come. Are you sure everything's okay? Then I said, everything's okay. I did not need to explain details because he was going to be discouraged. Yeah. So, the following week, he came. It was on a Wednesday. And some from the other town from Kawe, they came with my, the group of my wife who were on the lineup, they also came. You can imagine there was no food for those people. There was no food for the wedding. <coughs> on Wednesday, that on Saturday, there's a wedding. Jesus. So that day, somebody came in and provided food from nowhere. Then Thursday. So people were asking me, when is the wedding? I said, this is week on Saturday. <laughs> they looked at me, do you know what the wedding is? By then, <laughs> the previous month, we had this powerful wedding. Wow. And they were asking me, but they were telling me, you see, when you there at that wedding, then I said, yes. <laughs> Did you see what was there? I said, yes. <laughs> Do you think that's how your wedding would be? I said, it could be more than that. They said, you are dreaming. Amen. Oh, yeah. I said, I'm not dreaming. <laughs> On Friday. Say Friday. 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 I like Friday. Amen. I like Friday. Amen. Amen. On Friday, it was a special day, special not in the morning, not in the afternoon, but around 16. Jesus. Four. In the morning, I went to pick the cake in town, and I came. There were no people to help me. Only one brother volunteered. So, the people in the lineup had come. My father had come, and the others were invited had come. Now, on Friday, after picking the cake, some people said, no, I'm not coming for the wedding. I said, it's fine. The wedding is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then after a few minutes, he says, but here is the money. Mm -hmm. yes. So he gives me the money. Then we buy certain things that are required. Mm -hmm. The other one comes again. I'm not coming, mm -hmm. but here is the money. Mm -hmm. So we had invited a lot of people, and that was good. Mm -hmm. And finally, Friday, we were able to have said there are some of the things that we are lacking. Oh, no. But the wedding dress and the suit and the shoes we are not there. Oh. That is Friday 16 hours. Yes, yes. So this white man approaches me and then asks, Where well, do you have the wedding dress? Do you have the suit? I said, I don't have all this. Now, he also asked me, now you know, Apostle, when you ask me a question, ah. you are killing me, man. Yeah. 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 Because I expect you mm. to encourage me. Yeah. So he says, now when is the wedding? I said, I told you it is tomorrow. <laughs> this is, ah. Now, now, how is your marriage going to be blessed? You have no suit? You have no wedding dress? How is it going to happen? Then I said, everything will be done tomorrow. Amen. While we were speaking, the wife arrived. I said, Pastor Isaac, do you have the wedding dress for your wedding? I said, no. Not yet. But tomorrow there is a wedding. They said, yes, it's tomorrow. They said, okay, don't worry. I have three wedding dresses. Come and choose one. I also have some suits for men. Come and choose, even shoes. That same evening, about 17 hours, the suit, everything was Amen. done. Amen. And she even prepared food for the visitors and people on the wedding. Amen. I didn't know. Now there were no drinks. So the following day on Saturday, <laughs> the wedding day, I just sent somebody into town. And that was the day there were drinks in town. There were no drinks in, in that city. And it was about, about 15 minutes before the wedding. That's when he landed with the drinks. Jesus. I just went for five minutes quickly took my bath and then came up, joined the lineup. That's how I went into the church. And my father was surprised to see that everything was in place. Hallelujah! And everyone was asking me about the wedding. They didn't ask me anymore. Amen. Amen. 
That is how my wedding was. God is the provider. Amen. He will continue providing. Amen. If he did for me, Amen. he can do for you. Amen. That was my testimony. Hallelujah.